All right. So because of the snowstorm, even though we just finished assignment two, because we missed a full week of assignments and works and demos, we're going to skip assignments three and four. And instead, I'm going to try to address some of those skills in my demonstration for assignment five. Now, assignment five is our longest compositing project because it's got a lot of different steps, but there's nothing, or there's very few things in it that are wholly new. So what I wanted to start is by showing you a past student mentorship presentation on how to do this in Photo P, because we're going to use two programs to make GIF animations. And they are photop.com and gifmaker.me. And if you want to use Photoshop and do it, you'll just have to use an uh, older YouTube playlist for Assignment 5 where I show that in Photoshop because the capability is all in Photoshop as well. So the way it generally works is we're going to set up a brand new file and we're going to make it uh, for screen resolution. So about 8 by 8 inches by 72 pixels per inch. 72 is standard screen resolution. And that's because a GIF animation needs to run smoothly. If it doesn't run smoothly, then no one ever wants to look at it online. And generally, you don't view them really large. They're, they're viewed on phones. They're viewed in like a, a portion of a website, like a comment bar of a website, as opposed to filling up the whole screen. So 8 by 8 inches by 72 pixels per inch, even on a high def screen, is large enough to, to be a useful exercise. Next, this is our final compositing project because it requires the most organization. And I know a lot of you were talking about with assignment two, how having all those different layers of the different animal parts got confusing, and sometimes you had to flatten things. That's why we're really going to make use of folders as well as individual layers. So we'll organize certain asset folders together. And that's what, what this slide is about, which you have access to. And then like a lot of the compositing we've done with the landscape and with the creature, we've made a sketch first. And that sketch gives us a plan for how we're going to tackle it. Animation is no different. In fact, of all the, the art forms we're tackling this semester, animation is where you need to have the most kind of planning so that you don't have to, to redo a lot of work. So we're going to make what's called a nine panel storyboard which in nine steps tells our story. And we're just going to sketch it out first. And then we're going to make what are called keyframes using the assets from at least one element that we've already designed in the class, whether it's a creature, a background, an emoji, or a line art jumble, or even a combination of those. And through those nine panels, we're going to showcase a transformation that something happens that changes it from beginning, middle, to end. So this kind of steps through that. Um, we're just going to sketch one panel on its own, and then we're going to organize it into this nine-panel framework. And then based on those panels, we're going to create our finished keyframes. They're just animating. This is called an animatic with the rough sketches because you can animate your sketch as well, though it's not a required step. And when you put all of your sketches together in sequence or all of your finished keyframes together in sequence, you bring them into this program called gifmaker.me. They're all going to be separate JPEGs. And then that allows you to play them back at a certain speed. And that's all animation is. It's the illusion of movement from playing images in a sequence. So you're controlling the amount of time that passes before the next image plays, like a flip book. So then when you, when you do that with finished frames, you can add more than nine. You can do what are called in-betweens or tween frames that smooth it out. And this was the, the animation that that digital honors student put together that then later became an even more finished animation, right? Lots of planning, lots of steps. But by doing all of this first, the sketching part, they, they didn't end up doing a lot of work that, that wasn't necessary. And then they were just problem solving to get the most finished result. 
So those are some helpful basics that you can use. It's right in the assignment, right where it says digital honors mentorship presentation. Now going into the assignment itself, what we're trying to do is we have to use some digital element that you've already made. So we've done exercise one, which was the line art jumble for the band book. We've done exercise two, which was an emoji, which is what this demo is based on. And we've done assignments uh, one and two for this class because we're skipping three and four. But any one of those elements is going to be an animation asset for you in this project. So if we were animating our, our still emoji, we would want a transformation to happen, right? So the transformation here is a transformation of expression from one that's very short-lived but kind of calm to one that's really panicked. Here we have a transformation from intact to disassembled. And here we have a transformation by addition where a new element is added on and, and that affects a change. So how is this related? Um, we're doing it at screen resolution because we're, we're limited to browser-based programs. But if you're going to do this in Photoshop and not limited that way, you can do it at, at full 300 pixels per inch at 8 by 10. And that's what we're kind of working our finished storyboard to be. So even if our animation is at screen resolution, our refined storyboard could still be a digital print. And so I have here 8 inches at 150, but we can actually do 72. It just depends how, how good your computer is. And then what's the inspiration? Well, with with Instagram being kind of the, the main place uh, artists post their images in just an everyday way, there is, there is this artist that I wanted to call attention to that I've linked to named, named Evan McCohen. And he posts lots of kind of comics and he prints uh, calendars and, and independent comics. And they're all, they're all beautifully done, all digitally created. But he'll post them as a sequence. So basically, this is his storyboard of nine frames. And so then what I did is I cut them up and I animated them into what's called a rough animatic. So you can tell that it tells the story very clearly, beginning, middle, to end of this transformation. And not only does the, the creature, or the character in this case, transform into a flower, but also the setting transforms. You know, it goes from being kind of clouds and a sun to being just a, an empty dot background. So this is what we think of as GIF animations. And if yours is choppy like this and is only nine frames, but it meets all the requirements, that's fine. But as you learn these skills, and if you are more interested in animation, what that can become with more frames added in between those keyframes is a much smoother animation. So here you see that the background isn't transforming, but the background is instead animated so that clouds are moving. And that this transition just has a lot more kind of smooth elements to it and is a lot more resolved. And so my goal for you guys, we're just getting introduced to this in Digital One, is you'll understand how all of this can be done, even with just free software, from the storyboard to a finished GIF animation. And now more and more, it's kind of interesting. I mentioned The New Yorker here, which is a print publication, and it's one of the, the premier showcases of illustration in the country. Um, I have several several friends that are cartoonists that still regularly, like once every two months or so, submit a packet to the New Yorker to be considered for, for their cartoons. But a much smaller set of illustrators gets asked to do covers for the New Yorker. And nowadays, when you do a cover for the New Yorker, you're very often asked to do not just the regular print edition, but also to do an animated GIF edition for their online presence, right? So just knowing a little bit about animation is very helpful for you, even if you don't want to be an animator, right? And I, I fall in that group. I've done enough with animation to know that it's not what I want to do full time. 
because it is very labor intensive. If you think pulling together different sources for your creature was, was a lot of work, to animate really cleanly is, is just that much more uh, detail and, and a lot of work. But we'll just get introduced to it here and we should have enough time to do it. So for this project, we have a longer amount of time and we have more requirements. So there's actually three things you're gonna be turning in for it when it's all done. You're gonna be turning in your storyboard sketch, which I hope you will have when we come to class on Wednesday. So a lot of today is gonna to be me uh, talking through how to do that storyboard sketch. We will have a finished animation. And then from the finished animation, no matter how choppy it is, we want to create a refined storyboard. So this would be like a printout that shows the whole sequence of what you've done. All right. And we've got lots of past demos and past work we can look at. Now, if we look at Imgur and we look at the post for past work in assignment five, you can see what I did last semester, which was just transforming a Lord of the Rings emoji into something that looked even more haggard and weird. And I put some flames behind it. But it really has to do with your initial plan. Your sketch really is going to be the guide for what you end up doing. So you want to be informed enough about the process so you're not too ambitious with your sketch. So it can be really helpful for this project to look at the past student examples, whether they're for an emoji, whether they were for a combination of a setting and a creature. Remember, they have to showcase a transformation, no matter what it is. And notice, none of these animations change scene. You know, nine frames is not enough to, to change from an indoor scene to an outdoor scene, or really even to change a lot between characters. So you want to limit your story to just the nine frames. In their refined storyboard, they actually expanded it, which you're allowed to do. But the whole story is still just told in that sketch in the nine frames. They just added a lot more kind of subtleties and variation of color and tone. And even a really smooth animation with lots and lots of steps like this one can still be told pretty effectively in nine frames. So it's all about sketching out your ambition and knowing what's possible. And when things are moving, every little change makes a big difference. So for instance, in the storyboard here, you can't really tell that the cat changes much, but when you see it moving, you can see the cat changes, like the little changes of the head, the change in expression, the glowing of the eyes, the movement of the shoulders. So movement gives, gives a lot more visual engagement to your storytelling. All right. You can play with camera moves. That can get pretty tricky, especially when we're not, don't have the benefit of Photoshop. But there are different ways you can think through how you do it with your storyboard. So this one doesn't have any camera zooms in the storyboard sketch, but then by the time they did the final animation, they wanted to, to zoom in on the mouth to really showcase the, the fire coming out of it. Okay. So that's a lot of examples. How do we actually get started? Well, we get started by sketching. And this is one where in the past I've sketched digitally, but it's clunky, especially on a laptop. So in the next, in the next video, I'll show you how to sketch it. And I'm gonna use FaceTime as the camera and screen grab that. And you can actually see my sketching process. So what's my process before that? I have to think of what element from a past assignment or exercise I want to use. And what I'm gonna use is my creature from assignment two. And then I have to think, how am I gonna transform that creature? I'm gonna have that creature get really cold and freeze into a block of ice and then thaw out. 
So that's going to be my transformation with a beginning, a middle, and an end. 